Hi. Um, we're going to walk you through the gallery today. Um, and this is Marcus, and he's actually our social distancing guide, and I'm Sophia. So behind us, you'll see that there's some people walking through the gallery now, and we're doing our very best to stick to social distancing. So there's a good number of people outside waiting to get in um, and kind of just hanging out and getting to know each other. Um, but if you come this way, we'll start showing you some of the pieces. So here we have a piece by Eric on Dina, Off the Deep End, 2020, Egg Tempera, here's a piece by Ron S. Dot, War Crimes, 2020. Ron S. Dot is a Tampa-based artist inspired by the world around him. He creates paintings with characters wearing gas masks as a symbol of resilience. A fellow human sworn in to protect and serve murders a citizen in front of our eyes for all to see. As we protest with atrocity, our rights are infringed upon over and over. We must stand up against the machine. Power to the people. Ron S. Dot. Here we have a piece by Ian Wilson, Rear View. <laughs> Here's a piece by Evan Cooper and Junkyard, Looking and Word. Here's a piece by Manny Rangel, Que Quieres de Comer? Manny Rangel is a Sarasota-based artist whose work often reflects upon his upbringing and experience as a Mexican immigrant living in America. When Que Quieres Comer, Rangel pays homage to his mother and the nourishment she provided throughout his childhood and early adult life as she prepared family meals with this same spoon on display for over 20 years. And Manny is actually here with us tonight. How you doing? Um, so if anyone has any questions about his piece, you can ask them now, um, but we'll be chatting with him for a little bit. Manny, can you tell us a little bit about your piece and kind of like what inspired it that's beyond the text that we already read? Oh, um, so basically I've just uh, been uh, kind of exploring uh, a little bit more of uh, being a Mexican immigrant in the States. Um, and what it kind of means to me, or after being here for so long, you kind of forget that you know you are an immigrant, um, and sometimes I get lost in you know in time. And uh, I've just kind of been exploring a little bit more about myself, figuring out who I am as a person, um, and trying not to lose my roots, because after being here for so long, I've been here for uh, 27 years it's kind of easy to forget who you are and where you come from. And um, there's subtle things that, uh, that make you who you are. And uh, this piece is just, it's a very special piece to me, simply because it's very simplistic, yet there's so many things that have come out of this that have you know, uh, made me who I am. And I've grown to be who I am uh, without even really knowing uh, it's, it's just a very special piece to me, obviously. It's, uh, it's, um, there's not really much I can really say about it. I, I, it's, uh, you know, uh, 
my mom really means a lot to me, and I think it's uh, just a very nice thing to do that I normally don't say, you know, I love you all the time, or, you know, or I see her too often, and uh, something like this just means a lot to me, and it was something that I did for myself. It wasn't a piece that I was expecting to display or to sell or anything like that. It was just something that is something I'm going to keep for probably the rest of my life. As a, Has she seen it? No, she has not yet. Yeah. And is this something that you were always aware of? Was this always to you mom's spoon? Or was um, it a revelation that you kind of had? No, it's just, uh, I, like I said, I started uh, looking at my life and feeling very nostalgic. And there's subtle things that I started noticing that, like, whoa, that, 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 that really strikes a chord with me. Um, I, my little cousin actually saw this and, uh, in, my, in my studio. And he looked at it for one second. He's like, is that your mom's spoon? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He's like, I remember her cooking with that thing all the time. When I come over, he's like maybe five years younger than me, but he would come and stay at the house every once in a while. And he would get fed by this, this spoon as well. And so, And cooking is, uh, is something that your know, mom does for you in Mexico. It's like a very... It's just very ingrained in our heritage. Mm -hmm. Your mom is your, your, your nourishment. She feeds you. Regardless of what struggle she's going through, she is there for you regardless. And um, looking at just a spoon to me embodies all that. And I thought it was a very lovely thing to do for myself and for her. And uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a very, very personal thing. It's beautiful. So earlier you had said that you try to emulate concrete, but you didn't actually use concrete. What did you use? Um, so this is just pumice uh, and just mixed into uh, just a medium and with some uh, gesso. Um, and it kind of gives it this uh, very textured feel. Um, these actually look exactly, I was trying to mimic uh, the walls in my, in my town in Mexico. A lot of the walls are just, you know, done by just everyday people and like they'll build their homes and you know they'll plaster them, they'll have concrete, they'll have stucco, but it never comes out perfect. It always <laughs> ends up looking a little bit um, messy and unprofessional and homemade and that's completely fine. Some people would look at it and you know, say, oh, it's not good craftsmanship. But to me, it, it like that's another subtle thing that reminds me of home. Like, I remember like, being in Mexico, visiting, and just sitting by a wall, just rubbing my hand on it, and just feeling the grain and the texture, and like I said, those little things start popping up in my head, and I, I want to try to combine all these these nostalgic images and feelings that I have for what it is to be Mexican and where I'm from, and trying to put it into you know, something visual that you know, uh, just expresses what I'm what I'm trying to convey. Um, so every little every little aspect is about Mexico and heritage and you know, down to the feel of it, the texture. Um, you know, it all it all really compiles to be one one you know, one subject or one idea, um, and it's. Like I said, it's a very personal piece, and yeah, it's, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed uh, making it, and I'm very glad that people get to see it. You know, it's something that I was never expecting to, to really display for anybody. You know, it's like, a, like I said, just something that's going to go up in my house, and it'll be there when my mom passes away, and it'll just be something that just reminds me of it. Well, thank you so much for that. We're actually going to move over here for now. I know that there's a lot of people that joined us in the middle of that. Um, welcome. We are at the opening night of the Woods exhibition at Spaces. I can give you a little bit of background on the show. Um, the Woods is where 13 artists share glimpses of the contemporary American condition, one which is defined not only by collective anxiety, righteous anger, and unjustifiable loss, but also resiliency and, for the time being, hope. Whether realistically, metaphorically, or ironically, the works speak to where we are, how we got there, and the uncertainty of where we are going in a variety of media, including photography, 
painting, sculpture, and installation. The woods adds color and candor to the nebulous experience suggested by the idiom from which it derives, acknowledging what our leaders have failed to, that the only way through our shared misery is together. And right now, you're looking at Rikers by Caroline King. Um, and this is a big concrete piece it's in the middle of our gallery. And here we have Emiliano Sedacassi, who is our curator, um, and he is going to do an interview. So if anyone has any questions about the exhibition, you can ask them, and he can also just kind of chat and give you some of his inspiration and how he found some of the artists that he found. Hello. So we don't have any questions right now. Do you have questions? So to start off, um, as the first question, what kind of inspired you to bring this group of artists together and present this piece? That's an interesting question. Um, most of these artists I've known just by being an artist uh, in Tampa. Um, I went to USF for my undergraduate degree, so I knew a lot of artists from USF, but I've also uh, come to know a lot of artists just from being in the local Tampa art scene. Um, other artists, uh, you know, when I knew I was doing a show in Sarasota, I reached out to um, some artists that I knew that were closer to this neck of the woods, and. Um, and they introduced me to other artists as well. So um, really it's been trying to choose artists that I've wanted to work with for a long time, but maybe haven't had the opportunity to yet. Um, that's a lot of it. And then choosing artists that fit the theme of the exhibition. Um, you know, when, when I started thinking about what this exhibition would be, I actually thought I would be calling the exhibition Out of the Woods. Um, I, I learned that I was going to be curating a, a, an exhibition here in March, pretty much before everything really got crazy with the pandemic. And I thought by the time November came around, everything would have sort of been leveled out. Uh, I thought we would have control over you know, the virus. I thought we would be in a, in a, in a different place politically. Um, and it got closer to the time of the exhibition, and that was that was not the case. It was very much a situation where we are still in the woods, um, you know, regarding the pandemic, regarding a lot of the issues that have caused the pandemic to to rage the way it has. Um, so, in the time that I've been thinking about this exhibition and refining the idea behind the exhibition. Um, a lot of the artists I selected were just sort of no-brainers because they make work about, uh, you know, the, the American experience, especially the, the contemporary American experience right now. Um, so that's sort of how I approached this exhibition. Uh, you know, I wanted to choose people that were uniquely American. They had American stories, American backgrounds. Uh, and to highlight the diversity of America. Um, so choosing artists that could represent artistically, you know, a wide swath of, of who we are as a nation and, you know, how we got here and where we're going. So especially with this being the election week and kind of still not knowing even who technically won the election. How relevant do you think this will be moving forward? Do you think that you see us getting out of the woods at any point? Or like, where do you see this for the future? I think it's gonna take a lot um, for <laughs> us to be able to claim that we're you know, sort of out of the woods. There's, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of issues that we've never really addressed or atoned for. Um, and, and to be frank, you know, even if we do have a, a transition of power, even if you know there is a new president, um, I think I think there's going to be a long amount of time before we actually get a hold on the things that you know, like I said, caused 
this pandemic to, to really get out of control. Um, you know, we're, we're incredibly divided. Um, we're incredibly misinformed to a huge degree, you know. Um, and these are things that contribute to us maintaining this sort of, you know, survival existence for a lot of people in this country. Um, and that, that survival existence, you know, you can see by the artwork, um, it, it really is definitive of the American experience. Um, but, you know, I think I have my uh, preferences for who, who might come out of this election the victor. Um, but even so, I'm not sure much changes unless we, unless we really do the hard work, unless we really talk to one another and accept one another and, and move beyond move beyond the limits of our political imagination. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think we solve anything by maintaining the status quo. I don't think we solve anything by disagreeing on the problems that we have. Um, I, think, I think we move forward by acknowledging everyone and bringing everyone into the fold and addressing, coming to some consensus on what the problems are and addressing those problems. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any last minute questions for Emiliano before we move on? Okay, perfect. Emiliano, do you have anything else to add that we didn't hit? The show uh, remains on view uh, next weekend, Thursday through Saturday, 11 to 4. So, um, you know, if you didn't have an opportunity to come by during the opening tonight, uh, feel free to stop by next weekend. Um, I'm really proud of the show. I'm really proud of all the artists. Uh, it's been an honor to curate in this space. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. So I, I definitely encourage you to come check it out. Thank you so much. Okay. So, next we are going to go on over here. This is a piece by Taylor O. Thomas called Hold With Both Hands. It's made with watercolor crayon, oil stick, pastel, acrylic, and it's on a canvas right here. It's a large piece, I'm trying to get all of it. Here we have photography from Joel, George Goldberg um, from May 31st, 2020 during an um, MLK and, oh, the street name is MLK and 21st during a Black Lives Matter protest. Um, and I was actually told that there was a music video going on during these shots, and these are actually big um, speakers. And these are all prints that he made that are on display. With the photograph specifically, um, we've been hearing around the gallery that the camera doesn't do injustice. So coming in to see them in person would definitely be an incredible opportunity and experience. <laughs> Here we have one of Courtney Hartle's pieces. It's called Cicadas. Here we have another piece by Eric Ondina. It's called Palms. This is from 2019. Here we have another piece by Ian Wilson, Yoga at the Park, part two. 
can actually see that the trees are doing yoga and making movement. Here we have a photograph by Eric Gushner. This one is Injustice for All, number six. Uh, Erica Schnur is a Tampa-based artist whose work explores the human condition and sheds light on social issues often dismissed. In her Injustice for All series, Schnur inv investigates the black experience in America, especially how the principles on which America was founded are precisely what continue to hold black people back today. On top, we see Injustice for All number three. Okay, we have another piece by Ron S. Dot, Trophy Hunter. The white rhino is on the verge of extinction due to trophy hunting. The child wearing the mask on the rare animal symbolizes how young black males are killed with little to no repercussions, even though the results have an everlasting impact on the community. This cycle cannot continue. Ron S. Dot. This is another piece by Ian Wilson, Comet Neowise. Comet Neowise was a discovered by astronomers on March 27, 2020, and remained visible from Earth to the naked eye until late July. The comet will not travel near Earth again for another 6,800 years. Here we have another one of Eric Ondina's pieces called Fire and Furry. 2020. <laughs> Over here, we have another piece by Manny Rangel named Invasive. Um, we met Manny a little bit ago. Um, he was the one who did the spoon piece. And here we have another piece by Courtney Hartle named Grass Seeds. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, so if you can introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about your piece. Oh, sure. So uh, my name is Andres. Uh, uh, I primarily work in photography, but also in installation. Uh, this is an installation that I made that's essentially like a personal monument, basically like a, a, a signifier of a struggle, like a, a time period, basically. Um, it's the wheelchair my mom spent her final six years in. Uh, so yes, I dismantled the wheelchair and kind of made a small like monument to a, a time I'm period. Sorry to interrupt. Can you go over there yeah. and we're gonna make space for people to walk around. Sure. So, yeah, the installation is uh, comprised of every nut, bolt, and piece of cloth from her wheelchair. Um, it's 
I install it myself, uh, my hands and knees, every time I make the, the installation. It's been installed three times, this, will be, this is the third. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it's more of a gesture than like an object or any sort of like sellable piece of art necessarily. It's more just conceptual kind of um, a gesture, like a, a thing you spend some time with and get to be. Well, thank you so much. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> I see you again today. Yeah. I'm going to walk you around the rest of his piece. Here's the tag um, from Andres. Andres Ramirez is a Tampa-based artist who work, investigates, and analyzes how people of color, immigrants, and first-generation Americans process intergenerational trauma strained by family dynamics and the most basic sense of belonging within institutions and the nation as a whole. As you can see, we still have a pretty big crowd outside. In this room, we have a video by Warren Cockerham called Resurrect. It is a 16-minute digital video. Warren Cockerham is a Tampa-based film and video maker and instructor whose work is motivated by a curiosity about complex power structures and familial intimate relationships and how these analog power structures are presented and observed through the mediation of public and private archival material. Cockerham on Resurrected, back home in the waning days of the Bush area, a family visits the largest reenactment of the American Civil War in the state of Florida. The signs, symbols, and images of war, both past and present and near and half, decorate the landscape and culture of the small town. The footage was recorded on the eve of Barack Obama's inauguration and edited exactly eight years later. So here you can see some of that video.
to everyone who's just joining us in the live stream, this is a video piece that is being displayed in the exhibition.